Market soars just one day after the knee-jerk selling over the latest in the tariff battle. Uh, it's still all momentum, but uh, the major averages right now, we're talking up five of the last six sessions. The NASDAQ, believe it or not, at a new all-time high, and the S&P 500 at its highest level since Groundhog Day. Technology back in the driver's seat. But the question really right now is, is that going to be enough really to have a wider swath of this market climb? Let's ask our panel, Melissa Armo, a stock swoosh, Aaron Gibbs, S&P Investment Advisory Services Portfolio Manager, and Paul Schatz, Heritage Capital LLC President. Paul, great to see you. You too, my friend. All right, so, you know, it's interesting because the, the headlines are always bad news. The headlines have been doom and gloom, particularly as it uh, uh, revolves around the, the whole trade situation. But here we are. NASDAQ is at an all-time high. S&P not too far. Russell, too, not too far. And it looks like the Dow is one breakout away from also getting back to a new all-time high. Are we, are we in that phase now? We are. The last time I was on was right at the February lows, so I hope I'm not jinxing it and coming on at a peak. But I said at the February lows, everything's going back to new highs because bull markets don't end like the peak we saw in January. So we've seen that you said NASDAQ, mids, smalls, already at new highs. Or I've seen new highs recently. S&P is coming, I think, this month, early August. The Dow is going to take a little longer, but I do see very early signs that the Dow is beginning to outperform. So the indices look pretty good for a further surge. The sector leadership is a little concerning. You know, banks, banks kind of stink. Discretionary is okay or very good. Transports and and uh, and. Um, well, transports and, uh, are really a problem. Are yeah, are fine. I want to pick up on that because uh, but the banks are the troubling part of this, and I know earnings are coming up right now. Yeah, we're going to talk about banks in a moment, but I want to pick up on this <clears throat> sort of idea that there's rotation, right? It's steady rotation, and there's always like one leadership group, you know, normally techs, but there's also these these other areas that are dragging. Uh, I, I was in love with the brick and mortar retailers; they made big moves. They're starting to slip here just a little bit. Uh, you know, Paul just mentioned transportation. Delta had a pretty good number, but the, the valuations on them are so cheap, and yet it still feels like when money pours into the market, it pours into the same names. It does, and this is something we've been talking about. We're concerning. Look, we still expect the market to be up for the year, but this uh, this bifurcation that we see in the market, particularly between value and growth, your tech and financials, anything that pays a dividend, it's a disaster this year. REITs, utilities. So, um, and they're the ones that are like really, the growth is what's really driving the market. And we would like to see better breath to really right. feel more secure about what's happening right now. Yeah, uh, Melissa, the breath has been an issue. What do, you, what do you make of it? Because I know you were saying, wait through the summer for the most part before this market takes off, but it might be taking off a little sooner. Tomorrow is a very important day for the market. We are so close to hitting 28,000 in the S&P, and that's the level that we will shoot up like a rocket. And we could do it tomorrow. In fact, if we don't do it tomorrow, we're not gonna do it this summer. So what would create us doing that tomorrow? The banks reporting well, not only gapping up, but running and rallying, which is what they need to do. We did well today, but it's because Amazon. Once again, tech, Amazon made new highs today, but the banks tomorrow are so critical. Right. Speaking of the banks, uh, these are the, we have four banks reporting tomorrow, four financials, but today uh, uh, we have one of these regional banks report. The stock was annihilated, and all of a sudden, Aaron, the regionals, which were sort of a strong group, they're down 7% since June's high, and you wonder, why are banks underperforming? And to Melissa's point, is it critical that they show up tomorrow and beat these numbers? Uh, I think it's more about guidance. I mean, we all know when they Sure, but is it critical that they give us strong guidance? Absolutely. And, and look, it's going to be tough. We know with this yield, the flattening yield curve and the outlook, it's going to be very difficult. Um, and I think it's not just what we're going to see in the next two quarters, because we know that they're going to do like in the mid 20s for growth, like 23, 24 percent growth. Um, where the concern is, and I think what's really holding them down, is that 2000, 2019, we're looking at like 11 percent growth, just like half of this year and so i think it's really right. looking farther forward that we have to be Paul, I, want to, I want to ask you about this too because uh, we kick off earnings season we've got four big names uh, including city all of all of them have really been under huge pressure this this year so are you confident that they can sort of uh, the bar is low can they get us get over the a hurdle here so two things one let's not let's not forget that the nysc new york stock exchange advanced decline line, more all-time highs this week. So the rising tide is lifting all ships, but to a different degree. The banks are one of them. The banks really are stinking up the joint. Tomorrow, to me, what's important is not the guidance they're going to give. To me, if the banks 
tanks go up on bad news, there's nothing more bullish than that. You open the segment by talking about <laughs> the market going up on bad yeah. news. If the banks can rally on bad news, on bad earnings, on not so wonderful guidance, right. that to okay. me is a bell ringer that they could lead the next leg higher. We'll leave it there. I, I think I got a novel idea for them. They should start lending money. That might help them too. Hey, thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Meanwhile, Thanks. Trump's uh, trade tariffs uh, has everyone pushing back, even the Republican Party. Uh, and But I continue to say, take a look at the list of the things that we're importing those 200 billion why can't we make some of that stuff in america i'm going to bring it to experts that may have the answer next this program is brought to you by fisher investments clearly better money management